in the far southwest of Western Australia, where a rugged limestone ridge meets the Indian and Southern Oceans, there's an event that is etched into the very fabric of Australian mountain biking. More than a race, this is a celebration of endurance, resilience and the embracing spirit of the mountain bike community. For 15 years, the Cape to Cape has been at the heart of off-road cycling in Australia, growing from a local gem to a race that draws competitors from all over the world. This is an event that unites riders from seasoned pros to weekend warriors. While many events have come and gone, the Cape to Cape has endured, evolving every year to incorporate the best trails, the best locations and the best riders in the sport. Its own endurance mirrors that of the many thousands of racers who have participated in the event over the years. So join us as we celebrate the legacy, the camaraderie and the sheer exhilaration of mountain bike racing. This is the Cape to Cape 2023, a race like no other. Nestled in the southwestern corner of Australia's great landmass, the Margaret River region is a natural wonder. A collage of rolling vineyards, towering car reef forests and white sand beaches that dance along the edge of the Indian Ocean. The Cape to Cape is a four-day event that takes the riders from Cape Lewin in the south to Cape Naturalist in the north. The race makes its way from the Cape Lewin Lighthouse through Burrenup Forest and Margaret River to finish at Dunsborough and Cape Naturalist. With hills, bush, coast and kilometres of single track, the course takes in everything great about the region. Here we are, Cape to Cape 2023. Welcome along. It's so good to have you here today, of course, starting at the iconic Cape Lewin Lighthouse, 39 kilometres it is going to be a sensational four days of mountain biking. Almost a thousand riders for 2023. So great to have you here. Hope you have a super time. We're looking forward to seeing lots of faces and sharing lots of stories with you in the coming days. This is an event for both solo riders and pairs, but following the lead of other epic series races, the focus is on the men's, women's and mixed pairs events. There are elite, experienced amateurs and first-timers partnering up for the 2023 Cape to Cape. It's the first, first time, one. yeah. And it's the first time we've done a pairs event together. Yeah. <laughs> the new all-round. So I won't say it's going to test the relationship because we get along really well. <laughs> yeah. So I think I, have, I find it more fun in pairs. I think... Riding it solo, I've done that before, and it is fun, but I think you just um, really find that you help motivate each other as well and, yeah, makes you push yourself a little bit harder if you're the weaker rider, which is me. <laughs> Traditionally, we are road-only riders, and this is our first Cape to Cape. And, yeah, no, we, we had to give it a solid crack at eight, in our age group anyway. So we're in the 40 to 49, and, yeah, we're looking forward to it, eh? Mm, yeah. With the 800 plus riders assembled, they are sent on their way with a traditional welcome to country. Hi everybody, hello. It's good to see you all on saltwater country, all together on saltwater country. So, yeah, while you're on our country, we just ask that you um, yeah, take the time to to look and see our beautiful country. To take the time to listen with your ears as the wind talks. Um, and the country talks upon the winds. We hope that our Dema and Goma, our ancestors, will look after you all and keep you all safe on country while you're here. So, yeah, on behalf of my family, I'd like to say Kaya, Nyalamort, Kariyara, Yeranga, Warandi, Pujara, which is our family, welcomes you all together here on Saltwater Country. Have a great day. Five, four, three, two, one. In year one of the Cape to Cape, less than 100 riders departed the lighthouse. In 2023, over 800 keen riders head off onto the 15th edition of this iconic event. As it has been since the very beginning, Skippy Rock Road is the first test of the four days.
Stage one is designed to help the riders find their place in the field for the stages to come. Consequently, there are plenty of challenging climbs packed into the 35 kilometre course. From Skippy Rock Road, the course descends through Car Reef Forest to the base of the second climb up Heartbreak Hill. Once onto the tops, it's fast and hard along the gravel roads and single track at the northern end of the stage. From here, it's a steep climb back to the top via Sally's Hill before they retrace their tracks to Skippy Rock Road and the welcome site of the finish line back at Cape Lewin Lighthouse. Yeah, we're a little bit um, handcuffed in terms of stage one that um, we have to start at a lighthouse and we wouldn't choose anywhere else. And I think we now have that um, like circuit course, round course, get back starters at the finish idea. And we know it's a great seating course and we know that Skippy Rock Road climbs hard, but you can have a mass start with a thousand riders and it sorts them all out. It automatically seeds them in the first 5k of the events and it's just so iconic, that lighthouse, which is what our dream was 17 years ago when we first drove down, that's where we started. Um, and it's awesome going back, I love going back, it's, um, uh, it's only got prettier, that lighthouse. Um, you never know what sort of day you're going to get there, we've got a really good day this year. Um, and I've seen some horrible days down there, um, but when we, when we got down there, we knew the weather forecast was good. It just feels like such a special place to start an event. Last year on this stage, the lead pair of John Odoms and Brendan Johnson set a new record with an impressive time of 1 hour, 17 and 42 seconds. This year's course, a little bit longer, but that record still looks under threat. It's youth versus experience as the Trek Shimano pairing of Cam Ivory and Dan McConnell battle it out against 15-year-old Connor Wright and partner JP Vandermover. Behind them in third is the giant Mandura PCS racing team. A bit further back, teenagers Caitlin Brazier and Elizabeth Nuspen riding for Rock Salt Live Shram lead the open women's event. On the single track stages to come, the racing is tight and technical. But stage one is more a test of who has the legs and who has the form. Approaching the last big climb of the day up Sally's Hill, the two open men's pairs are neck and neck. At the top, just 1.8 kilometres later, the Trek Shimano Duro have taken the advantage and opened up a 50-second lead. Behind the second place, the Mellow Velo pair is the solo men's race leader, Joel Green. Riding them is a challenge of technique as much as fitness. And for most of the field, it's easier just to push the whole bike. It's a brutal. It's a brutal. But it's fun. There's no mountain in Singapore. So this is really a new thing for us. I think I got a little bit of dirt on my face. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Nobody loves Sally's Hill, but riders still return to the Cape to Cape year after year. Among the field are riders who have completed 10, 12 or even more Cape to Cape events. <laughs> Fifteen times, I think. <laughs> yeah. Fifteen events, fifteen times up Sally's Hill. <laughs> yeah, it's getting harder every year. <laughs> you know what? This is the best year yet. It's after uh, this is my tenth year, and it's like wine. It just gets better and better. <laughs> With just four kilometres to go, the day looks set to go the way of Cameron Ivory and Dan McConnell. The Trek Shimano pair have continued to open up the lead and look comfortable as the lighthouse and the finish line come back into view. It has been a blisteringly quick stage and the Trek Shimano boys cross the line in 1 hour 18 and 45 seconds to take the stage win and move into the coveted yellow jerseys. The Mellow Velo pair are 1 minute and 35 seconds behind for second overall on the stage. And a further three minutes back in third are the giant Madura PCS racing pair of Darby Gabler and Joel Dodds. 
After some tight racing in the open mixed pairs category, returning champions at Roller RC come in for another stage win. But the grimace of pain on Peter Mullins's face suggests more than just tired legs. Here come our lead mixed pairs, Peter Mullins. Behind them, the youthful pairing of 16-year-old Caitlin Brazier and 22-year-old Elizabeth Nuspin bring it home in one hour, 47 minutes to take the lead in the Open Women's General Classification. You're 16. You look like you're 15. That's good. That's well done. Awesome work. Those climbs are hard out there. It's quite different, isn't it? The courses at Cape to Cape are designed to be achievable for most abilities, but it's how hard you go that defines how tough the days will be. What really matters to the majority of the riders is crossing the line in one piece, ready to tackle the remaining three stages and doing it with a smile on the face. If we had the best day out there. Lots of sand and, and dust evidently, so ready for tomorrow. Back in Margaret River, the leaders' jerseys are handed out, but Peter Mullins can only hold her green jersey up in front of her. She has damaged her shoulder in a collision with a tree, and her prospects of making it through one more stage, let alone three, have taken a hit. On the start line of day two, the jersey is on, but the discomfort is obvious. Yeah, we were ticking along pretty well, actually, and then the last... Uh probably 20 minutes of ride going down the wall. Uh, a tree jumped out of nowhere and stopped Peter, so she's hurt her shoulder a bit and, uh, yeah, took a bit of a hit there. But I think she's going to start today and did a lot of pain to move the arm up and down. But, uh, yeah, a few Panadols and deep heat and that might get her through. But once it warms up, who knows? It could be OK. <laughs> we won this stage last year. Uh, it's probably our favourite stage because it's, it's a lot of power and you, you get on the uh, kind of flattish downhills and it, it really suits us so it's a bit of a shame we won't be able to kind of go as hard as we'd like today but um it, it is our favorite stage by far yeah while the mixed pair look ahead to what is sure to be a tough day the opens women's leaders are stoked with their matching jerseys in what is their first race together um, well, Caitlin's actually done a, a couple of pairs racing before. I, this is the first time for me, and um, we're both new to the Rock Salt Live Shram team. It's our first time. Uh, we actually met each other for the first time at XCM Nationals, where Caitlin picked up a gold and I picked up a, a bronze. Yeah, which was really nice. We're not used to riding in such sandy conditions, but I think it'll be a fun day out and challenging as well. Whether you went super hard or you took it easy on stage one, stage two is 20 kilometres longer and the body is going to hurt, regardless of where you are in the field. I do this every day, regardless of bike riding. Yeah, yeah. I'm sore every day. I'm actually out riding today. <laughs> Mr Marble Wines hosting us today, 50 kilometres ahead of us. How do you reckon you'll go? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, legs are a little bit sore after yesterday. Um, I think we were, yeah, swinging a bit towards the end, uh, trying to distance uh, Mellow Bella, and that's the name of their team. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we've, uh, we've come back okay today, and, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, for stage two, racing into and through a foreign up a forest. The main GC contenders, they're the first away from the magnificent setting of Mr Barville Wines. This is a very fast and flat bunch ride through the opening kilometres, so staying in contention means hanging on and keeping up before the single track arrives and things start to break up. Stage two is a Cape to Cape classic and a favourite of many of the riders who have done multiple events. From Mr Barville Wines, just outside Margaret River, the first opening section takes the riders into the magnificent Burrenup Forest. 
before hanging a left and heading out to Cape Fracian on the highway to hell. From here, there is a grind up at Contos Road and a 10-kilometre run back to the finish where food and refreshments await. Once in a bar and up, the racing kicks into high gear and the main peloton starts to break up. The first 8K of the forest is a 175 metre climb up to the Burren Up lookout. And once again, the Mello Velo pair are setting the pace with open men's leaders Trek Shimano. A little over a year ago, the forest was burnt out, and in the 2022 event, there was no single track accessible. So it's great to be back into some old favourites for 2023. We went back last year almost uh, as a salute to Burren Up and that we knew we had to kind of go back and to the local community and we couldn't avoid it because like it, it felt to me like if we didn't go there we were almost saying oh it's burnt and you shouldn't you shouldn't go and see a burnt down bush but this year we were able to get just back into some of those trails and I knew it was just a step forward to get Burren Up back to where, where it should be. And it just felt good this year, going back, seeing more green, seeing some single trails, seeing some nice wildflowers. And it's actually quite amazing how, like bushfires are a thing in Australia, um, and how a bush recovers and nature recovers. Yeah, last year I still thought it was a good course, and this year we made it better, and riders loved it. Back in the second bunch, the mixed pairs are battling it out. Peter Mullins is pushing through the pain caused by every jarring root and rock, holding off the pressure from second place Zoe Davison and Tristan Nash in the wheelie yellow team. Oh, it's a little bit of pain, yeah, so we're just nursing it and there we go. She managed to suck it up. Yeah, she'll, yeah, she'll tough it out, I think. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. It's a three-horse race at the end of the highway to hell. Trek Shimano, Malo Valo and Giant Madura PCS hit Contos Road together and begin the four-kilometre grind, oblivious to the stunning coastline that provides the backdrop. With one kilometre go on the hill, 15-year-old Connor Wright attacks. Trek Shimano hold on, but the Giant Madura PCS team can't match the effort. It's a big move from the young man to take it to two of the most experienced riders in Australian cycling. Cam Ivory and Dan McConnell are both Commonwealth Games athletes with multiple national titles and two results to their names. It's a tight battle over the final few kilometres, but in the end, the yellow jersey pair are too strong once again and cross for their second stage victory with Malo Velo just 25 seconds behind. It's days like this and it's stages like this that have secured the Cape to Cape's place in the hearts and minds of Australian mountain bikers. There's drawn riders of all ages into the sport and changed lives along the way. It was uh, a day I was sitting back in Melbourne. It was uh, pouring with rain. I think it was May or something like that. I was uh, avoiding doing the gardening and uh, I sat down in front of uh, SPS and lo and behold, I came a uh, documentary about the Cape to Cape. And, uh, in total contrast to sort of dreary Melbourne, we had happy people, we had sun, we had uh, enjoyment, we had fun. So that was enough to uh, make me immediately go out and uh, buy a mountain bike. In fact, I bought two. I bought one for myself and one for my wife. I've got to say, it was probably life-changing, best decision I've ever made. Uh, it really is a fabulous sport, and uh, it's something which I suppose uh, fits with uh, the Cape to Cape in that really, Anyone can do it. I know that's an often uh, overused phrase, but the reality is that the courses are, are a challenge, but the reality is if... Uh, I mean, I did mine first after I'd done uh, three months worth of training, and uh, I finished it, and it was fabulous, and, uh, and I think it's evidenced by if you do stand by the finishing line, everyone who comes across that line's got the greatest smile on their face. Come on, Paul, you good thing! <laughs> the beauty of pairs racing lies in the shared experience and even amongst the solos, the camaraderie can make or break the spirit. This is exemplified beautifully by the Union Internationale de Cyclistes Mediocres de Montaigne, or roughly translated, the Union of Mediocre Mountain Bikers. Come on, mate. We're almost here. 
So we actually came about uh, just before last year's event. Uh, it was a we had six, five or six of us racing last year. The union's now at ten. Um, and six of us have been able to get down this year. We've got two riders on debut and uh, they're learning the tricks of the trade. We had them out on the trails this morning. So we're, we're confident we're going to be able to handle this. Mediocre. Really great banter and a really good appreciation of a quality beer. That's really where we start. Uh, beyond that, do you need skills on the trails? It helps. Um, do you need to be able to work as a team? Absolutely. Um, but you know, we've got great downhill riders, we've got great uphill riders. We don't all have those skills, but we're working on it. You know, when we need to help each other out, we help each other out. That's the way the union rolls. <laughs> You're pressurising me to cycle up the hill. Oh, I'm pressed. See you later. It's been an outstanding day on the Cape to Cape. When the weather delivers, the stages can take on legendary status. Back at Mr. Bar Val Wines, there are wall-to-wall -wall smiles and plenty of food and beverages to sample while trail stories are shared. I'm here with our new fan, Caitlin Dufresnier. Do you have a just come in first place, second stage, Cape to Cape 2023? Looks like you have your jersey. How was that there today? Um, it was pretty exciting. It felt like we were on an adventure the entire <laughs> two and a half hours around. I got a, um, a flat tyre down um, one of the, the Highway to Hill segment. Yeah, and it took us a really long time to change it. And I, I came off as well at the start. Yeah, it's been eventful for both of us. Despite it being a tough day for Peter Mullins, she and partner Jared Maroney are rewarded with yet another stage victory. Yeah, it was excruciating actually. I was glad today's like most of the course is in a straight line, but when I had to stop for corners, why well, couldn't really turn and I couldn't drink and Jared fed me a couple of gels. <laughs> so, but otherwise, I mean, this is our favorite. This is our favorite course and I think the sand really suits us. It's kind of adds a technical aspect to it and um, I was hoping today maybe if we could kind of finish with them then we'd still have a chance for the overall so to get a gap was pretty exciting and yeah two more to go. <laughs> well the top dogs from every age category get awarded their leaders jerseys for the recreational riders top dog means something else altogether. It's a lovely day for it too isn't it? Magic. Stages at the Cape to Cape are designed to be achievable and over and done by midday so that riders can enjoy the rest of what this region has to offer. The Limestone Ridge has an expansive network of caves which you can visit. If you prefer to stay above ground though, you can explore the bush or the oceans, both of which are teeming with life. Foodies and connoisseurs? Well, they're catered to by dozens of boutique growers and producers. Alternatively, you can just find a great place to eat and finish the day with a swim. All that matters is that you are recharged and ready to go for whatever awaits the next day. Day three of the Cape to Cape is Super Sock Saturday, which raises money for disadvantaged youth. 
The good people at Bike Doctor run the initiative as well as being on hand every day for fine tuning and last minute emergencies. I unloaded the bike and then just pedalled out of the car park and then got onto the road and bang goes the chain. So we're really, really looking forward to that. We're two minutes out of the top ten and we reckon we can chase them down. We're getting them today. Yeah. yeah boy. This is the Margaret River stage and a day that most of the field is really amped up for. This stage is heaven for lovers of single track mountain biking. Yeah, today, as far as I'm concerned, today's the day. It's the premier stage. It's the fun stuff. Uh, it'll be a battle to get out to the single track uh, as close to the front as possible so there's the least traffic going into the fun stuff. And then for me and my teammate, we'll go as hard as we can in the single track, try and build up a gap to make up for yesterday and then just hold on for dear life all the way back here uh, and hopefully have some fun and do well and then sit down to a beer. Pretty decent night's sleep last night and we're, uh, yeah, we're looking good, ready for the best stage of the race. Stage three, though, is really three stages in one. From the ever-popular Colonial Brewery outside of Margaret River, the riders will head out in bunches again for an opening eight kilometres of gravel riding before they hit the fun stuff. The Pines and the Woody Chup trails right on the edge of Margaret River are packed with single track and stage three incorporates 26 kilometres of their ups, downs, berms, jumps and features. With smiles on their faces, the riders will finish the stage with a blast along the Margaret River for 13 kilometres back to the Colonial Brewery where cold refreshments await. The opening kilometres are hard and fast. This is about setting yourself up in a good position because once into the single track, passing and breakaway opportunities will be limited. For the WA-based riders, today is an opportunity to push themselves on trails they've ridden many times and challenge the dominance of yellow jersey holders from over east. As young Connor Wright and JP Vandermeer like I had them pegged for the win before this came up but then Dan McConnell and uh, Cam Ivory entered and I thought, boy, this is, this is actually going to be on, but it's so good to see, you know, Cam and Dan, they're actually really having to work for the wins that yeah. they've got because the young fellas are right on them. I think there was only about 20 seconds in it yesterday. Connor Wright, he, he is going to be a world-class athlete at whichever discipline he chooses. He finished second at the Gravity Nationals last weekend, so he's got like a multitude of talent. Oh man, he's, um, he's just a diesel in our team. Um, I'm just here to be chaperone and um, trying to show him some tips here and there. But other than that, he's um, definitely pulling the team along. Um, it's a brilliant race. Um, it definitely it brings everyone here. Um, and because we're on local trails, it's, yeah, it's just amazing to ride with them. I can only do it this year because I'm only 15 and I have to have someone over 18. So yeah. JP's I got perfect, bored, you? <laughs> yeah, perfect chaperone for me. But um, yeah, it's first experience is so good, yeah. I haven't had an easy day yet, it's just been full gas from the start, but um, yeah, it's so good learning so much from those boys, and even JP as well, you know, sitting in the kitchen talking about his road riding career and stuff, it's, it's crazy, I'm learning so much every day, and yeah, it's, like, it's a pleasure to ride with these boys. 15 years ago, when the Cape to Cape was just beginning, Connor Wright was only just arriving into the world, and now he's leading the race through trails that didn't exist when the race first started. The event, the sport and the riders are now deeply interconnected. I was racing sort of um, cross country three or four years before the Cape to Cape started and um, we had nothing in this region at all. We were driving to Perth. Now we've got so many local riders who've grown and I've seen bikes on cars, you know, just grow ridiculously. The, the best part for me is I, I go into Pines when we're marking the course and there's so many people in there. And, and I look at Margaret River now, and when we first started building those trails, um, I remember JD once saying, 
Oh, Margaret River's renowned for surfing, but there, won't, there will come a time when you'll drive through the middle of Margaret River and there'll be mountain bikes on the top of cars or on the back of all the cars. And, and he said, it's always offshore in the pines. Um, and I thought it was such a great saying. And ever since then, it's always resonated with me that it, it could be a thing, and, and it is now a thing. And I reckon after 15 years, that's probably the coolest part. I mean, we're breeding riders in Margaret River now because they've got these trails to ride on. Um, we've got Grom's clinics. My other half's done it for seven years with little girls. And, you know, you start training them at seven years of age. They're ready to race the Cape to Cape now and they're ready for it, like, mentally and physically. So, yeah, they're going to be good riders. Much like surfers come out of this bay, mountain bikers are coming out of Margaret River. The trails in Margaret River, like the event itself, are designed to be rideable and allow you to challenge and push yourself as hard as you choose. It's fast, flowy, smooth and fun, which is why this is one of the most beloved stages of the event. Even today, mums and kids are riding the pines together. Helen Durbridge is competing in her first Cape to Cape with her son. But her son is Luke Durbridge, professional road cyclist, veteran of multiple Grand Tours and currently riding with Australia's team, Jake Owalula. I trained for it in 2019 to come down and then Luke very kindly phoned us the week before the Cape to Cape and said, Mum, do you want to go to Rugby World Cup in Japan? Well, <laughs> um, so we went to Japan for the Rugby World Cup. <laughs> Sorry, Cape to Cape. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then, of course, we've had COVID and a few things like that in the middle. So I was just going to sort of reg register as a solo and see how I went. And, uh, but no, just riding with Luke's just been, it's just been so fabulous. I think that you don't get those moments in time very often. And I think I'm just a really lucky mum. It's just super special. <laughs> it is very different to my day job. I don't like getting dirty, you know? <laughs> no, we, I, I think it's my sixth mountain bike ride I've ever done. I'm not allowed to snowboard or ski, but uh, mountain biking, you know, with the whole Matthew Vanderpoel thing, it's sort of a, turning a bit of a blind eye to people doing mountain biking in the, in the off season. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually loving it. So I'm thinking about getting a dropper post and probably should have got a dual suspension. And So now I'm, I'm hooked, you know, so I'm, I'm loving it. Well, I think the best thing for me is that uh, everyone's just out to challenge themselves, out to have a good time, out to have a beer after the race. It's a world-class event, and that's why I guess it's been... I mean, every person I've spoken to are not from Perth. They're from all over the world. East Coast, you know, Asia, Europe, everywhere. So it's obviously got a bit of a bit of a reputation throughout the world and that's probably what's uh, why it's so popular. One day to go and uh, but it's just been a super moment to just spend this time down here with Luke every day it's just just fantastic to have those four days together it's just so beautiful down here it's awesome. After tight, tricky racing in the single track, the stage opens up for the final few kilometres back to the Colonial Brewery. Following the Margaret River itself, the course becomes very XC and it's a test of form and fitness once again. As they have all week, the Trek Shimano duo of Cam Ivory and Dan McConnell edge it once more, making it three wins from three stages. Three of a cape to a cape. Cam Ivory and Daniel McConnell over the line. After a final sprint, Mallow Vello finished second, just three seconds ahead of Team Winging It. Pretty spicy, bit of a... Uh... Odd start to the race. We got uh, got a bit lost out there. <laughs> Did a few bolt laps around the pines, and then um, after that, yeah, the pace was on. Hey, well, you, you've done well after a little bit of a detour. Margaret River and the Cape to Cape has delivered yet again. Great conditions and great tracks always equals a great stage. No, it's great fun. The first first um, part out of here was beautiful, flat yeah. trails. Everyone sorted themselves out. And then we hit the uh, Yahoo section. Yeah. Oh, happy days. Everybody Got to be quiet in the three-quarter stage. Like and then the last uh, five, Beautiful ten forest. Wildflowers, what more can you want? Yeah. <laughs> There are no changes in the lead of any of the main categories after stage three. Peter Mullins and Jared Moroni successfully navigate another stage without incident to hold on to the green jersey. 
Every age category is celebrated at the Cape to Cape and the younger riders provide just as much support to the older riders as they receive in return. For 68-year-old silver jersey holder Joe Grasso, this exchange is a big part of why he returns to the event year after and year. And in first place and retaining the yellow leader's jersey, uh, I just love seeing young people excel. Um, I aspire to them as much as they aspire to me. And, you know, I just that's a great reward for me. The whole dynamics of this event and the participation of the, the community uh, and just the crowd, the people that turn up, the atmosphere, I've been to Europe, I've been to World Championships and things before in Masters categories and this is as good as any I've ever, ever been to anywhere in the world and that's what makes me come back. Day four of the Cape to Cape dawns grey and overcast and the final stage looks set to be a bit of a wet one. The weather cannot dampen the spirit, however, and the riders arrive at Wise Wines, amped up for the final stage of Cape to Cape. Most of the field here is competing against themselves and the distance, but for the union of mediocre mountain bikers, it's about races within the race. It is, you know, the other thing about being in a team is we've got the camaraderie, we've got the support. So the two boys out the front, uh, the, the Dudley brothers, they've been doing really well, they've been racing each other, they've been, they worked out actually if they had formally ridden it as a pair, they'd be top five. Uh, so that's fantastic. But we you know we ride informally as pairs and we're giving each other support. And you know, the other boys up the back who are doing the hard yards, getting the cramps, you've got someone to sit there on the side of the road with you, pull you along get you the confidence to keep going and that's been lovely too. Every day after the race the Strava comes out, oh who was faster on the downs, who was faster on the ups, the boys doing the jumps on the downs. <laughs> <laughs> it is top speed. Top we do watch, a yes yeah. top speed is a, is a regular visitor. Bragging right. On the bragging <laughs> rights, yes. <laughs> sure. We've had a ball, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of dramas and things like that, and but we've helped helped push each other. That's for sure. Yeah. When when I start crying, Lara helps me, and when Lara starts crying, we don't literally cry. Crying on the crying inside. Crying on the inside. Yeah, yeah. But it's been such a good event as well, and so much fun. I'm glad we we ended up coming together last minute, and it's yeah, it's been a good good four days, well three days, and we're looking forward to this day here. Yeah, it should be pretty sweet. Uh, Eagle Bay is really nice. Um, I don't remember too much this stage from last year, but um, hey, we'll, we'll give it a go. Hopefully this rain uh, firms up the ground a little bit. Even on a grey day, Cape Naturalist is a stunner and the stage opens with a section out to the beach and back along the coast road. It's a chance to warm the legs up and to complete the journey from Cape to Cape, just like the event originally conceived 15 years ago. Well, when we first came up with this crazy idea, we got in a mile forward drive and we drove to Cape Lewin and we spent a day driving all the back tracks and everything and we got to Cape Naturalist and we went lighthouse to lighthouse. Um, and when we designed these um, loop courses, 
it always felt harder. How are we going to do that in Dunsborough when there's barely any land? And, and um, we got really lucky with Wise coming along and being prepared to be our start finish venue. And we had to get super creative in terms of the course. So it, it really is a maze. And they go out of Wise and back into Wise and then out to Meal Up and back into Wise. And it's one of the only places we have where spectators and family and everyone can go and be based for, for the whole stage and see them start, see them finish and see them come back into the venue. It probably makes has made it now almost the ultimate final stage because we are back up at Cape Naturalist. But also for all the supporters that have followed their riders all the way through, they don't have to run around and try to find them on the tracks. They come back to them and I think that's been really the best part of that redesign. It's a great way to finish um, four, four days at Cape to Cape. Anything can happen in mountain biking, but as stage four gets underway, all the category leaders have a firm grip on the GC jerseys. For the challengers, today is mostly about trying to take a stage win to finish the week. We put a lot of effort into designing the courses, and when you do, and people come in and love it and, and it's great like when Cam Ivory and Dan McConnell love it and they're Australian champions and they're on a world tour and they think like, everything's awesome. So when they like it I take real pride but like today like I'm leaving the finish line we're waiting for the last person to come across and this 71 year old woman comes across the finish line last and I went up to her and said oh congratulations you know it's amazing it's a long day in the saddle and she turned around she had a smile from ear to ear and she said yeah but it was the best day I absolutely loved that and I was thinking man if you can love that and you've been out there for five and a half hours like twice as long as Dan McConnell and um, Cam Ivory like that probably is even more satisfying that someone like that can get just as big a buzz in their life out of it um, as Australian and international riders so yeah, it's cool. Cape Scape is one of my favourite events of the year. I don't get here every year. This year, yeah, just managed to tag it on the back of my trip, but uh, to come away, ride these awesome trails over here with good mates, uh, yeah, it's always fun. Once the gun goes, we're, we're full gas. Uh, we're being pushed uh, quite hard here this week by the local Mello Velo guys. Uh, they're a fair bit younger than us, but yeah, they're just taking it to us in the single trails. They've got uh, a lot of speed, a lot of skills, uh, and it's, yeah, it's hard work to beat them. I think my first pairs race was the Viney in 16 or something. Did that with Anton Cooper, which was it was a mem memorable event. But um, yeah, I think I really like the pairs. It's sort of just you know we don't really do the pairs racing too much, so it just sort of mixes it up a little bit. It's nice to actually have that sort of team feeling. A lot of your own racing is very much all on you, so it's nice to mix it up with a bit more of a team vibe and you can share the experience with someone else so um, yeah for me it's really cool to see some young guys who hopefully can actually step up and you know actually race at the highest level. If the 15th anniversary of the Cape to Cape has highlighted anything it has really highlighted the importance of the event to the riders themselves. Over its 15 year history, it has cemented its place in the sport and with experienced heads like Peter Mullins bringing the next generation of riders to the event, it will hopefully continue from strength to strength. Yeah, for me it's my eighth Cape to Cape, I think. That's how long I've been coming over here. And I feel like it was um, it's part of like Australian mountain biking history, really. Uh, and for me, I kind of started racing here. I must have been about 25. And I, at that time, wished that I had started when I was even younger. And so for these girls, I am enjoying being able to introduce, introduce them to the best part of mountain biking in Australia from such a young age so that they can do 20 Cape to Capes. Peter Mons is great, like she's very experienced so I can learn heaps from her and um, she definitely suggests a lot of races and a lot of tips and really helps me grow and develop as a rider. So I travelled all the way from New South Wales to Western Australia and I'm very glad I did it because it's been a great event. For Caitlin at 16 she's better to be coming to races like this and 
and racing in big bunches of men on different blind trails every day as opposed to going and racing um, you know for a lot cost a lot of money to go overseas and race World Cups uh, and to potentially not perform at the same level I think the confidence they get from winning races like this is really important in their development as juniors so I think this is a better pathway to ultimately eventually becoming a World Cup mountain bike racer. While the event exists mainly for the riders, the finish of Stage 4 is there for their supporters. A steep climb up the tar sill within Wise Wines that allows the supporters to get right up close to the action. It's an exciting final leg of the four days. And with one last line honours to race for, it's Mallow Velo challenging the Trek Shimano pair. Once again, the 15-year-old sensation Connor Wright kicks first and goes for the line. It underlines what a great week the young man has had, but teammate JP Vandermeer doesn't have the legs to take on the yellow jersey holders. Cam Ivory and Dan McConnell cross the line together to make it four stage wins from four. Behind them, Joel Green, he also completes a clean sweep to win his first cape to cape in the solo riders category. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Like we, we've only yeah just teamed up for the first time. We've always ridden against each other, so yeah, we just had an awesome time. Uh, plenty of laughs, and that's why we came over here just to have good fun and to have some close racing. Like the young guys really pushing us. Um, yeah, it was awesome. In the mixed pairs, local duo Tristan Nash and Zoe Davison cross for their first stage win of the week, but it's not enough to knock Peter Mullins and Jared Maroney off the top spot. The Roller RC pair secure themselves at back-to-back -back victories at the Cape to Cape in what must have been one of the toughest weeks on the bike for Peter Mullins. There's been no stopping the Rock Salt Live Shram duo this week despite crashes, punches, mechanical problems. The young pairing of Caitlin Brazier and Elizabeth Nusbin cross the line and add their names to the prestigious list of Cape to Cape female winners. It was really cool, like even from the base there were people that were all the way down the bottom and they were running up, I saw you, you were running up with us, um, it was really good and everyone had their phones out, they were cheering, yeah, it was awesome. It's great, yeah, no, it's nice to have a win and it was great battling with them, I'm glad Peter was able to finish with a shoulder and yeah, it was, it was a great, great week of racing. Yeah, it's probably the best day just because there's so many variations of this and that and like it adds to every rider really because it's got the open fire roads and the single trail and that so yeah, I actually really like it. It's probably of all the stages the one that feels like the raciest race at the start because yeah. we have that little um, ditch off the start and then straight along the road so it kind of feels like a road race into a cross country race. It's definitely hard to finish though. Yeah. Like it's, it's, everyone thinks our oh, last stage will be nice and cruisy but yeah. it's, it's a very hard stage. And yeah. then you guys added an extra climb yeah. <laughs> just to make it harder. <laughs> After four epic days, the Cape to Cape has truly delivered on its motto. The finish of stage four encapsulates everything this event is about. Grit, perseverance, community and camaraderie. It's a great few days with your mates, whether you're the first one home or the last one home. I mean, the most rewarding part for me is people coming to where I live and enjoying it, and then they go home and we've still got it. <laughs> um, so lucky to live here and have all these trails around me and see my friends when they come from around Australia once a year to Margaret River for the race, and it's like a big party for four or five days. I think when you do stuff, like it's easy to have harebrained ideas that never go anywhere. I've had plenty of them. Um, so it's really rewarding um, to see this now and, um, and then we meet with the local mountain biking guys and they're so proud of, of their trails and what they've now got um, but they don't know where we started 15 years ago. But now there's guys with fully fledged trail 
building businesses and um, and they've grown out of Mugger River to go and build these trails all around Australia and that's kind of part of what I look at and go, you know what, that might not have happened um, if we hadn't had the idea with the Cape to Cape and yeah, for that whole multiplier effect and carry on effect in a community but into really good people and other businesses and everything else, so yeah, I'm really proud of that. To Cape to Cape, thanks everyone who has raced, supported and helped deliver the event for the last 15 years. So, here's to the next 15. See you next year.